We're in Big Fork, Montana. If you want something, sometimes you just have to build it yourself. That motto is the foundation of our next stop, the New Agrarian School. This forge is home to some of America's most talented blacksmiths, and today we have their top smiths competing to represent both the shop and me for a chance to become a forged and fire champion. Guys, we want you to build this. The double bit felling X. Since the 19th century, the double bit felling axe has been a favorite tool of North American lumberjacks. Revolutionary because of its simplistic design, this axe features two different heads. One with a thicker edge designed for delivering deep felling chops on massive trees, and the other with a finer edge ideal for dropping limbs, making it essential for life in the remote wilderness. This axe is so synonymous with the American frontiersman, it has even been featured in the folk tales of the giant lumberjack Paul Bunyan. Gentlemen, good luck. We'll see you back at our forge in four days. All right, buddy. Let's go. My game plan today is to forge my ax and then punching the hole. Pretty clean cut. Yep, looks good. We're ready to do our hardening. OK, here we go. I just crunched my ox, everything went great. No warps, no breaks. So yeah, we're looking good. I am going to gun blue my ax. The gun blue gives it a nice black color. So it'll have a really nice contrast between the dark body of the ax and the polished out bits. It could help put me over the edge. I'm cutting the slot for my wedge. This is the visible part of it and you want to make sure that it's right in the center. Looking good. I really love how this ax looks. I want to do the new agrarian school proud. Probably the biggest tool I've made is an eight pound sledgehammer, but I've never made an ax of this size. Now that I've forged this billet, I want to punch this eye by hand to make sure I don't make a mistake. Yeah, I like how that looks. I just got into the parameters yesterday in my forging and quenching. The uh, next thing to do is go ahead and drill a single hole from my axe eye to make parameters. Later we'll have a pin to mechanically hold the handle to the axe as an extra safety precaution. Oh, shizn it. The, the drill bit basically destroyed itself. I should have drilled this hole through my axe before I heat treated it. Because this is hardened, uh, basically I need to heat up the center of the eye there just to make it softer. Now I'm gonna go ahead and quench it again. This is a really critical moment. The blade could crack or get real warped. It's pretty good so far. I don't see any signs of warpage. Feeling pretty good about it. I'm going to start working on my handle. It's important that this fits tight, mostly from a safety point of view, but also from a practical point of view, because if I want to win this thing, I got to put everything I've got into building this ax. I'm going to test this by just cutting a small sapling. Uh, I'm excited to represent Jeffrey and the new agrarian school. I'm looking forward to the judges' forge. So far, I'm pretty happy with it. All right, gentlemen, first off, we've got a functionality test. I'll be taking your axes, using both bits, and chopping into our log here. Peter, you're up first. You ready? I'm ready. So right off, Peter, looking at your axe, the symmetry is really nice. Everything's got a really good shape to it. The handle's super comfortable, very smooth. As far as the edges go, one edge held up. There's not any kind of deflection on it. The other edge has the smallest deflection. But uh, I feel like I could definitely drop a tree with this axe. So nicely done. Thank you. All right, Silas, you ready? 
Yes, sir. Silas, right off the bat, this is a really, really pretty axe. It's a little bit lighter in the head. The uh, handle construction, very smooth. A little bit more obtuse of an edge than Peter's, which is a good thing, because there's no deflection or any edge damage at all. So really well done. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, we've had our functionality test, and that went well, so now it's time to have some good old-fashioned forge and fire fun. We're going to test your weapons in a way that they've never been designed to be tested. We're going to smash them into these pots and that can. Peter, you're up first. You ready? I'm ready. OK. momentum with this axe, man. It's going. But um, your edge did take some damage here. After the test, there's some rolling on your edge. Or I can hook my fingernail on it. And then on the other edge, you've got a couple small chips. Mm -hmm. All in all, everything's still right and tight. It still feels good. So nicely done. Thank you. All right, Silas, you ready? I'm ready. All right, Silas, one of your edges has a little bit of rolling to it. Not too much. Still sharp. Other side really didn't take much damage at all. I really do like how smooth you got this handle. When I'm swinging it, it just travels through my hand really easily. It's comfortable to use. Dave, you did a good job. Thank you. Thank you. You have fun? Oh, yeah. You know, smashing things. That's what I do. <laughs> Both of you guys did a phenomenal job, but the time has come for us to decide which one of you will be moving forward into the final leg, fighting against three other Smiths that we pick up across America. And the Smith moving forward in this tournament is... Silas, congratulations. Now, Peter, you did a great job. You're a talented Smith, but unfortunately, your blade did not make the cut, and Dave's gonna tell you why. Peter, this really came down to two things. The chip your blade took, and then the rolling on your edge would eventually affect its functionality. And those are the reasons we're letting you go. Well, Peter, it's been an absolute pleasure watching you work. But unfortunately, your time in this tournament has ended. I want to say thank you for coming out. But at this point in time, I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. Sure. Every. I'm really happy with the axe I was able to make and uh, how it performed. This is the first time I'd built an axe of that size and caliber. And I think that Silas is a really competent blacksmith. I have no doubt that moving on with the competition, he's going to do well. Well, Silas, congratulations. That means you are one step closer to a $20,000 check to go into your pocket and $10,000 in gears and supplies to go to Jeffrey Funk's new agrarian school. Silas, that means you are joining us in the second leg of this tournament to fight three other Smiths that we're picking up across America for the final battle. Very well done, man. Good job. I'm excited to move on to the next round. I'm naturally a competitive person. Peter's an incredibly talented dude, and you know, it all came down to the testing. And I hope that I've made Jeffrey and Dave proud. This is certainly the nicest axe I've ever made, and I'm ready to bring my all to the next round. <laughs>